some women are noticing cycle changes after their COVID-19 vaccinations. So why would the COVID vaccine or any vaccine affect a woman's menstrual cycle or hormones? Um, so what's actually interesting is that um, we are seeing um, some menstrual irregularities after COVID, COVID diagnosis. So um, there was, there's only actually one study, um, one study that came out of China and it was retrospective. So looking backwards at here are women that had COVID and did you have irregular menstrual cycles afterwards? Mm. Um, and what they found was that about 25% of women who had active COVID disease um, actually do have a disruption of their menstrual cycle, either from menstrual cycle length, meaning like either, you know, 28 days versus 35 days or volume, meaning their periods got heavier or their periods got lighter. Um, and it's transient, meaning that it generally works itself out within two to three times. Um, the origins and reasons why COVID would affect menses isn't exactly clear. However, we know that COVID affects the ACE2 receptor, which is primarily in the lung, hence the reason why we see such bad lung um, disease with COVID. There are also ACE2 receptors in the ovary and particularly actually high levels in the test in the testes. Um, so it's unlikely that it's actually a COVID effect. And what we think it's is actually like an immune effect. So your um, menstrual cycle is actually very, very highly coordinated um, set of events that come from your hypothalamus that speaks to your pituitary, which is another, another level in the brain, and then eventually speaks to the ovary. And there's lots of things that can sort of disrupt the kind of normal cyclicity of menses. Um, any kind of illness, if you are very, very ill and require um, medications and make a significant stress on your body can really affect a normal menstrual cycle. So the thought is, is that women who get sick with COVID and have this really great cytologic immune response, then subsequently the cyclicity is just a little off because of that stress on the body. There's actually no data on the vaccine causing irregular uh, menstruation. There's none out there. Um, however, I suppose it would make sense that if the vaccine is supposed to, in a much smaller level, emulate a COVID response, that you could demonstrate a, um, a short-lived irregular menses for two to three cycles. Um, however, like I said, the data is not there. So there's... There's no evidence, there's no data that shows any correlation with the COVID vaccine affecting menstrual cycles. No. Not and, what about, and what about fertility? Uh, because now there's this newfound fear that getting the vaccine affects a woman's fertility. Is there any evidence that points to that? No. No. Um, with regard to fertility, there seems to be no effect on female related fertility. Um, there does seem to be an effect on male fertility, um, not the vaccine, but the actual diagnosis of COVID, just like male reproduction, there's several disorders that can cause kind of male abnormalities in sperm, particularly um, motility and morphology can be disrupted um, from being ill. Um, you know, the nice thing about men is that they make new sperm every 90 days. So typically these bounce back, but they are seeing kind of some um, sperm count abnormalities, particularly after COVID illness, um, whether it was mild, moderate, or severe COVID, these men do have um, abnormalities. Um, again, transient, but we do see them, um, but nothing after the vaccine. Is there, so what could possibly be causing some changes in cycles for those who haven't had COVID, but got their COVID vaccine stress? I mean, what, what could the other factors be that, you know, makes people think that it's the vaccine? Well, I think that it probably is one of those things where if you had a really bad response to the vaccine, meaning you got, you had a fever, you got the myalgias, um, perhaps you um, became, you know, sick for the 12 or 24 hours that you just didn't feel the greatest, that that kind of major immune response that your body creates can disrupt a cycle, but just once or twice, this shouldn't be a consistent cycle dysregularity. Um, this should be, you know, your cycle should kind of pop right back in kind of after one or two cycles. Um, but I suspect that's what it is. I mean, uh, in particular, you know, women who are kind of have any kind of chronic illness can have irregular menstrual cycles just from the 
idea that, you know, your body is going through a stress, you're taking kind of a sort of stress hit on your ovaries and it kind of disrupts that normal communication between the brain and the ovary. Dr. Patel or Dr. Delaney, have you noticed more patients asking about this or complaining about cycle changes? I mean, are they coming to you to get help with this? I haven't. Um, I, I, I honestly haven't. Um, there hasn't been anybody that has called me yet. I've just seen, unfortunately, a lot of misinformation on the internet that, you know, sparks discussion, but I have not actually seen any clinical indicators that this is happening. Yeah. Same for me here. Um, you know, more, more, more than anything, I, I just get patient questions, you know, Hey, could you give me a little bit more information about something that I read on the internet? Um, and I'm always happy to answer those questions, um, or address concerns and stuff like that, but I haven't seen any, any concerns, um, in person, um, or had to address that, um, that problem. And Dr. Lawler, when it comes to research being limited on the COVID vaccine, do you think that's kind of drawing some of the misinformation? Should there be more research going into this vaccine? And are we expecting that? Well, I'm not sure what you're asking in terms of more research being done. It, it's true that, that we're collecting data still on these vaccines and potential side effects through systems like the, the CDC's Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, VAERS, and post-marketing surveillance that the manufacturers are held to. And so we've now administered COVID vaccine to over 150 million Americans, right? So we have data now from the largest cohort, uh, really, of any group that we've used to study uh, a vaccine. And we have yet to see significant safety signals around fertility or menstrual cycles. And, and I think it's important to recognize that when you vaccinated uh, essentially half of the American population, people are going to coincidentally have all sorts of things happen to them uh, in uh, close proximity to when they got vaccinated. Just again, because we're vaccinating half of the country already and hopefully we'll continue to vaccinate more. So many women will have abnormal menstrual cycles periodically for whatever reason. And because uh, again, half of them have been vaccinated, some of that will occur in, in proximity. It doesn't mean that there's causality there. What would you I would agree. Oh, I mean, I, I, you know, certainly I feel like there is a, a there are a many plethora of things that can cause irregular menstrual cycles. And just because temporally someone had a vaccine a month ago doesn't necessarily mean it was because of the vaccine. Um, the only reason I mentioned some of the cycle irregularly noted in COVID is that, you know, we are seeing some of that, but it's temporary, jumps right back, does not affect fertility. Um, you know, I know that a lot of patients have been worried about it affecting ovarian reserve. Am I going to lose eggs? Am I going to lose time and the ability to conceive? And it doesn't do that. Um, certainly there have been several pregnancies kind of after the vaccines, I think in the original post COVID there was 10 or 11, which is a small number, but still didn't disrupt the ability to conceive by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. And what I was going to say with, with regard to just future research or more studies that you asked that question. Um, so the, the studies that have been done have been large studies, but what I always make sure the patients know is that those initial studies didn't include pregnant women. Um, but now there's ongoing studies with pregnant women that are being done. And we have um, a recently, um, released published study in over 35,000 women through that vaccine adverse events reporting system, the VAERS um, that was already mentioned. And there have been no safety signals in, in, that, in that group of women who have received the vaccine. Um, most of those were early um, vaccinations in healthcare workers. Um, and so we have a lot of um, data now that is showing that this is not dangerous for pregnant women not showing any safety, safety signals for pregnancy, which is great. Do we know of any vaccine that really causes infertility? I mean, this goes back, you know, way back when women believe some vaccines cause infertility. Is there any vaccine we know of that does? 
No, I mean, the infections that we're protecting you against cause infertility. And that's my point by discussing that COVID in general can have, can have bad sperm effects. Um, but, um, you know, mumps was a classic one that caused mumps architis that caused male factor infertility. And so, but no, I mean, the reason why you get these vaccines is to prevent um, future infertility or future problems and kind of future problems with the associated kind of severe illness that occurs when you get COVID. Would anybody else like to add on to that? Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. No vaccines that um, cause infertility. Um, there are vaccines that we suggest that if it's a live vaccine, for example, that somebody not get pregnant um, within a certain period of time, usually 30 to 60 days. But even so, um, studies have shown that if somebody gets a live vaccine, for example, MMR, um, that there is no increased risk for, for pregnancy uh, adverse effects and stuff. So we, again, we are definitely advocating for people to go ahead and get the vaccine because we know that the outcome of COVID illness is far worse um, than any side effect from a vaccine. For example, like Dr. Delaney mentioned, um, fevers, chills, myalgias, things like that, that are temporary um, 12 to 24 hours, um, as opposed to getting an illness, which could, could lead to death. What would you like your main takeaway to be for women who have fears about how the vaccine may affect them? I'm, you know, I tell patients that, I mean, these, this is, this is where shared decision-making with your patients comes into, in, into context, right? And so this is something that you shouldn't be getting your information from the internet. Um, you know, things that are, seem very sensational on the internet, like, you know, I saw something that it caused female sterilization. I mean, that is quite drastic and, um, you know, inappropriate. Um, these are things that you should speak with your physician about. Um, and if you're trying to conceive, I suggest reaching out to one of your physicians to discuss that because I tell my patients to get the vaccine. And that's the same for me. Um, we, encourage patients to ask questions about it, um, to get all the information and to get accurate information. And that's what we're here for. So we absolutely want people to ask those questions or express those concerns so that we can address them and make sure that they have accurate information uh, about the vaccine, its safety. Um, and also in that shared decision-making, I talk a lot about um, what the complications can be if you get COVID. So as a pregnancy specialist, that's my focus. So th those are the patients that I'm taking care of. So um, what we talk about is that, you know, we, if you get COVID while you're pregnant, you have about a three times increased risk of ending up in the ICU or needing mechanical ventilation or breathing tube for support. Um, and almost a two times more uh, increased risk of death um, as compared to somebody who is not pregnant of the same age. So it's really important that people understand that there can be really serious consequences if they get COVID um, and that we do have a really effective way to prevent severe illness. Um, and that's through the vaccine. And so we talk about the risk benefit and in, in, in light of what it would mean to get COVID and in light of what it means to get that vaccine. Um, and so again, yeah, like Dr. Delaney said, just share decision-making so that um, patients can feel comfortable with that decision that they've made. And I, say, I say similar things to my, like trying to conceive patients that, you know, like I'd rather have you get the vaccine and have a 12 to 24 hour kind of downtime than get severe illness and, you know, unfortunately have poor consequences because of, you know, getting the COVID illness. Dr. Lawler, what would you like a main takeaway to be for women who just have these concerns? Well, I, I would recommend that, that women who are concerned uh, educate themselves and, and go and, and read about these vaccines and their side effects, but to, to do that uh, using credible information sources. So the, the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC uh, website has great information uh, it is um, it, the nation's premier public health uh, entity and, and has credible information. Your local medical school probably has information on their website about these vaccines. And those are credible places to get information. It, the, the random TikTok video that your friend sends you or uh, Twitter posts and Facebook posts, those are not credible information sources. And there's a lot of sensationalism and frankly, 
misinformation and intentional disinformation being spread on those social media platforms. So I, I really encourage folks to be cautious about where they're getting their information and, and only, uh, only believe information that you find on these credible information sources. Absolutely. Any other final thoughts? I know Dr. Delaney, you have to run here soon, but anything else you guys would like to add? Yeah, I mean, as far as credible information goes, um, the CDC, of course, as Dr. Lawler mentioned, and then um, for pregnancy and for infertility um, questions and stuff, there are really good organizations that give out patient information, including ACOG, which is the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine in my area, and then Dr. Delaney can yeah. mention. Uh, ASRM, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, did come out with a statement in December when the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine started coming out that it is recommended to not delay vaccination when you're trying to conceive and that they recommend doing this um, kind of if you're willing, because that's, I think it's important and you should. I'll make sure to include um, those sources in the web story when we post it so people have direct access to those. Um, I wanna thank everyone so much for joining me. I, I, I know on a time crunch since you guys are all working today. So I really do appreciate you guys uh, keeping the public informed um, and we'll end the panel here unless there's anything else. I think we're good.